and was driving through the back roads of Norfolk, getting increasingly frustrated at a bunch of cyclists who were holding her up. And as the young lady attempted to pass them, it appears she clipped one who went flying into a hedge. Now, rather than feeling pangs of guilt, she drove on and then she bragged about the incident to her hundreds or so Twitter followers, about 100 Twitter followers, and this is what she said on Twitter. Definitely knocked a cyclist off his bike earlier. I have right of way. He doesn't even pay road tax. Hashtag bloody cyclists. So that obviously goes out to her 100 friends, but of course they then see it and they retweet it to to their friends and suddenly you've got 10,000 people having a look and eventually it gets to Norfolk Police and they were not impressed and they tweeted this to her. We have had tweets reference a road traffic collision with a bike. We suggest you report it at a police station as soon as possible, if not done already, and then DM us. Apparently a uh, investigation is now underway. Ultimately, after the offending tweet went viral, went everywhere, you could see it, by the way, on my timeline as well, the cyclist, the young lady struck, whose name is Toby Hockley, saw the original tweet. He couldn't believe it. I think it's really disrespectful for, for someone to hit a cyclist and or hit anyone and drive off from the scene of an accident. She didn't know if I was alive or dead. And to, to go on Twitter and almost joke about it just makes her seem really silly and really immature and quite disrespectful to, to other road users. So it really had happened and he was the cyclist. Now, do, do any two groups, groups loathe each other more in modern Britain than cyclists and motorists? Let's talk to Carlton Reid, the executive editor of cycling trade magazine BikeBiz.com. Also runs a campaigning website called IPayRoadTax.com. And on the phone as well, Guy Norgate, a trucker who says cyclists need their heads banging together. Carlton Reid, first of all, classic case this. Uh, can I just correct you on, on perhaps one point, and uh, maybe I'm, I'm wrong on this, but the, the reading I took of it from, from what Toby said was this was head on. This wasn't she was following the cyclist and she was getting frustrated. Toby said he was coming around a corner and she overtook on a blind bend and then she rammed the cyclist head on. And of course, that could have been any road user that she hit, not just a cyclist, it could have been a motorist, pedestrian, just so happens. It was a cyclist. Now, if she'd hit a child pedestrian, I don't think she'd have boasted about it on Twitter. And she, she probably wouldn't have said then, the child pedestrian doesn't pay road tax, so I had every right. Quite. So we live in a society where there's, there's, there's people who assume that what they think is, is a road user fee gives them more rights to be on the road, which of course isn't true. Guy Norgate, what do you make of this one? Well, from what I've heard, I'm, um, cyclists have <laughs> no time of day for them. They are just absolute lunatics. They really are. I mean, it's had me in buses as this because they are just un for real. Prime example, I was down in the smoke a couple of weeks ago, which I absolutely detest and the bought big time. London. Because you buy cyclists think, we're number one, we've got priority. They're either blind, they either need spec savers, or they've got albino eyes because they cannot see 45 foot of vehicle with an indicator on the trailer, an indicator on the back of the unit, an indicator on the cab door, and an indicator at the front of the vehicle. I was, as I say, I was down in London where they turn left at the satellites. There was an articulated vehicle in front of me. Some muppet on a moped decided to come up the middle of, of the two-lane dual carriageway and then decide to dive in front of me. The articulated vehicle in front had already set off and was proceeding to turn left as normal. A lot of wagons have cyclists do not undertake this there as a warning sign. What did this muppet do? Decide to go around with a wagon and the wagon nearly took him out. Who was to blame? The cyclist. Carlton Who would have been arrested? The wagon driver. Carlton, come back on that. Well, I'm not too sure where we're going to that kind of angle of attack. This is a hit and run on a, on a road user. What's it got to do with, with that, that gentleman's uh, previous experience? OK, we're hang on, we've got, we've got the... Just a second, Carlton, Sunday sorry to drop... Norfolk, and it was a hit and run. Ca- sorry to drop, Carlton, we've actually got Toby Hockley on the line. So just quickly, the man who was hit by the car, driven by the lady. Uh, Toby, was it a head-on? No, she caught me just on my, on my right-hand side. So she, she was driving the same direction as you? No, no, no. She was, she was coming the opposite direction up a hill. I see. And she, caught, she clipped you, but f- travelling towards you? Yeah, she came around the corner, so she's coming at me at a slight angle. So I just caught the front of her bonnet and her wing mirror. Did you bounce off the bonnet? Yeah, I bounced off the bonnet and off to the left and into a hedge. 
And I'd, I'd saw somebody writing about this saying that the most scary group of people for a cyclist are young women in cars. Is that correct? My biggest fear is uh, Sorry, go ahead, uh, Toby. Uh, the, the scariest people I find on the road is middle-aged ladies in white Range Rovers. M- middle-aged ladies in white Range Rovers? Yeah, they're... Okay, the line's breaking up. We'll, we'll leave it there, but thank you very much, indeed. The victim of the accident. Carlton Reed, you were saying? Uh, well, there is, there does seem to be a, a, a hatred out there against cyclists, and it does seem to be an Anglo-Saxon thing. We, we just don't get that in, in the Netherlands, we don't get it in, in uh, other countries in continental Europe, but okay. America gets it, Australia gets it, and the UK gets it. Guy is saying it's, it's because of the way you behave. It's because of the way cyclists behave. They are so arrogant oh. and they go on the pavements and they ignore red lights. Well, of course, you know, it's... It, Two rights don't make a wrong, but of course motorists are constantly on pavements when they, they park their cars on them. Are they? Motorists also go to red lights. But this it comes down to even if cyclists were the most impeccably behaved user group out there, uh, motorists, some motorists, not all motorists, but some motorists would still have a beef with them. And it's, it's how do we get beyond that? Because it's not a them and us thing. I'm a motorist too. I drive a car as well as I ride a bike, as I know you do, Jeremy, too. And it's, it's why do one set of road users have such a beef against this other group of road users? Guy, how do you Highly explain complex. the hatred, Guy? Uh, you're not saying you money. How do you explain the hatred that road u- vehicle drivers have for cyclists? Well, in my perspective, there's a three-letter word. It's spelled L-A-W. It's called the law. And a lot of, a lot of junctions now where the... Um, uh, traffic lights are, there are them little small boxes to that gentleman who's, who's at the other end of the line. They're on the yellow pillar, the cold cameras. If we jump them on a red light, we get done. What happens with a cyclist? Nothing. Nothing. I rest my case. I rest my case. They're just a menace to society. What they should do in London, wherever the cycle lanes, they should be made to stop 45 foot back away from articulated vehicle when the light turns to green, there should be a time delay for that cyclist then to set off to give us chance to get moving, to see them in our mirrors, and if they do not obey that, then there is a camera in the cycle lane and they video what evidence there is there, and if there is an accident, as soon as that vehicle goes round the corner, that cyclist gets OK, thank you very much, Guy Norgate, trucker, Carlton Reed, editor of the cycling trade magazine, BikeBiz.com. And it's ready too. The Chris Evans Breakfast Knocked off my bike in February. The lady driver was completely distraught and admitted liability. I was quite badly hurt, semi-conscious on the pavement. Despite the blood and the police presence, a passerby then apparently started swearing at me, telling me to get up, even tried to kick me. The police were astounded and said they'd never seen anything like it before. Andy Burney in Stockbridge in Hampshire says, I work by the side of the road cutting hedges. I've got lots of people who go past me and say hello, but not cyclists. Cyclists seem to have an aggressive attitude about them. They've got a bad reputation. They need to change it. This girl was wrong, though, to celebrate the incident. On Facebook, Andy Nichols says, make her ride a bike for a year and then give her back her car keys. True, if you ride a cycle, uh, you so see the whole world differently. You just suddenly realise what they are up against. Matthew Tamir in Somerset says, I'm a motorist. I took up cycling last year. I think there are bad examples on both sides of this argument. I've encountered lots of dangerous motorists while out on my bike. And as a result, I am much more conscientious of cyclists when I'm in my car. Maybe this girl who knocked the cyclist off his bike should get out for a ride every now and then to see how scary it can be out there. 